Welcome to the second video on x-rays as part of the A-level medical physics option. In the last video we talked about the x-ray tube and if you haven't seen that video you should watch it first. This video talks about the production of x-rays in the x-ray tube and it also talks about the distribution of energies um, of the pr produced x-rays and the origin of those x-rays. Okay, so let's get going. All right, so the electrons in the X-ray tube are accelerated by a large potential difference and they hit a target anode, which is made normally of tungsten. Now there are two mechanisms going on inside the target anode, inside the atomic structure of that um, metal. And these produce X-rays of two different types. The first type of X-rays produced are called breaking X-rays, sometimes known as Bremsstrahlung radiation. The second type of x-rays produced are called characteristic x-rays and we're going to have a look at each of these in turn and find out what the origin of these two is and, and what the mechanism is. Now over here we've got a little uh, graph of intensity, so that's the intensity of the x-rays produced against, the, against their energy and now the energy here is measured in kilo electron volts. So you can see that there's this typical um, continuous distribution of x-rays all right which depends at the the height of which and the the, the, the the spread of which depends on the accelerating voltage superimposed on that you can see these spikes all right now these spikes are individual frequencies of x-rays individual energies of x-rays produced all right now the breaking x-rays which we'll talk about in a moment produce the characteristic or rather the typical I shouldn't say characteristic because that's what the other ones are called the typical um, smooth continuous distribution the characteristic x-rays um, form these spikes alright so the breaking x-rays form the smooth distribution the characteristic x-rays form the spikes okay so let's have a look at each of them in turn and try and figure out what's going on alright so an electron can be incident on the tungsten anode all right, and actually penetrate the material and as it does so it will some of them at least will come across the nuclei of the target atoms so this is usually made of tungsten all right so this one is an, uh, a nucleus or an atom of tungsten obviously this has got a very large positive charge and the electron has a negative charge so the two of them will interact electrostatically and that will result in a change of trajectory of the electron as it approaches and passes the tungsten atom. All right. In effect, what we have is a deceleration of the electron. All right. The electron slows down. Now initially, the electron had a certain amount of kinetic energy here called EK initial, right, the initial kinetic energy. As it passes the tungsten atom um, and is decelerated, it will lose a certain amount of kinetic energy. The change in kinetic energy donated here, denote, denoted here by delta EK. So what happens to that kinetic energy that the electron has lost? Well, it's given off as a photon. All right. There is an interaction with the elect electric field and as the thing decelerates, a photon is given off. And in fact, all charged particles, when they are in electric fields um, and decelerated, will emit electromagnetic radiation. Okay, now, it just so happens that the amount of deceleration here um, causes a photon to be given off whose frequency is in the X-ray range. All right? So the X-ray is the, is the type of photon produced when this amount of kinetic energy is lost, all right, as it interferes with these atoms. That's one of the reasons why they make these <coughs> targets out of tungsten. Okay, so that's the first um, mechanism, and that's what produces the breaking radiation. Second mechanism is, as we say, called characteristic X-rays. Now, this is an entirely different mechanism for producing X-rays. And what happens in this particular situation is 
the electron will be incident at this angle, for instance, and what it will do is it will ionize one of the tungsten atoms, all right? But it will pass close to the nucleus, deep within the atom, and it will actually ionize, sometimes, from the lowest shell. Now, for historical reasons, this is actually sometimes called the K shell. All right, the other shells you can see are given different, no, different, different letters. The K shell is usually called the ground state or the lowest energy level, but in, in this particular case, we're calling it the K shell. So what happens is the electron from the K shell is emitted from the atom, ejected from the atom by the incident electron. So both of them zoom off in different directions. This leaves a gap, an empty space in the K shell. Um, and then what happens is spontaneously, one of the electrons from the outer shells will transition downwards into the K shell to take the place of the ejected electron, which is not there anymore. And as it does so, it will travel from um, an energy shell with energy E2 down to energy en to, to the K shell, which has, for example, energy E1. And the difference in those energy levels that the electron loses, we call it delta E, is equal to the photon energy that is given off. Now, if you remember your quantum mechanics last year when we were looking at atomic spectra, you'll remember that when an electron transitions out, uh, inwards into a lower energy level within an atom, a photon is given off. For energy transitions into the K shell, that photon energy is in the X-ray spectrum. Okay, so that's why we're interested in them. So ionizations that occur in the K-shell are followed by inward transitions into the K-shell, resulting in the um, production of an X-ray photon with energy HF, all right, which is equal to the difference in the two energy levels. Okay, so let's go back to the curve that we saw um, of intensity against energy. And have a look at that. Now, one of the main things to notice about breaking radiation is it can take pretty much any value, or certainly a range of values. Because, and actually, we need to go back to the slide that we were looking at before for that. The deceleration of the atom, oh, sorry, of the electron as it comes close to the atom, um, can effectively take any value. You know, the, the electrons will. Uh, be incident upon the material at various distances from the nucleus and therefore they'll be accelerate they'll be decelerated by different amounts and in fact there's a continuum of amounts of deceleration the amount of energy that's lost by um, the electron forms a continuous spectrum all right and therefore the x-rays produced also form a continuous spectrum so the breaking x-ray x-rays produce this characteristic sorry I said it again this typical curve okay that is the one that's produced by the breaking radiation the characteristic x-rays because they are quantized effectively because the electrons can only fall in from these or transition inwards from these outer shells right that is going to have discrete values all right, the energies produced here have discrete values because we're moving from one energy shell to the other. And so that's why you get individual frequencies produced. And each of these spikes corresponds to a different transition downwards into the K-shell. All right, so this will be from one energy level down to the K-shell, and this will be, will be from another energy level down into the K-shell. All right, so the K-shell ionization transitions result in these spikes, and the breaking radiation results in this continuous spectrum because um, it can have effectively any value. Okay, and that's it.